Okay. Anyway, so the virtualization world, it's really buzzing right now. And yeah, for some pretty good reasons. Absolutely. There's a lot happening. It feels like these new developments are genuinely set to change how we manage our digital setups, you know? Mm -hmm. And the excitement online, especially in the tech forums, it's uh, it's palpable. Yeah, you can really feel it building. So today we're going to dig deep into Proxmox VE 9.0 beta. It's bringing some uh, really interesting updates, updates that promise to sort of step up your game, whether you're just tinkering in a home lab or running stuff at enterprise scale. Right. It covers a wide range. And our mission here today is basically to unpack the biggest advancements. We're going to focus specifically on the improvements for a Linux containers LXC and, you know, what these changes really mean for you out there. Uh -huh. Because let's face it, for anyone who loves optimizing servers, squeezing every last drop of performance out of hardware, this release, it could feel like hitting the jackpot. Well, it's definitely a significant release, and that jackpot feeling, it's built on a really solid foundation. We're talking Debian 13 Trixie underneath. Okay, the latest Debian. Exactly. And it's packed with the latest bits. You've got the 6.14 kernel, QAMU 10.0.2, LXC 6.80.4, OpenZFS 2.3.3, Ceph Squid 19.2.2. Wow, that's a lot of updates. It is. It really sets the stage. This isn't just about being powerful now. It's... um. It's genuinely setting things up for the future. It feels very forward-looking. Right. So before we jump into the specific LXC goodies, maybe just give us a quick refresher. What exactly is LXC? Why are Linux containers such a big deal for so many Proxmox users? Yeah, good idea. So LXC Linux containers, people often call it the uh, the unsung hero of virtualization. I've heard that. And for good reason. Right. See, unlike a full VM, which runs its own separate operating system kernel, right. LXC containers actually share the host's kernel, ah, okay. which makes them incredibly lightweight, mm. fast, really efficient with resources. Think of them like isolated little Linux environments, perfect for running just one app or service, a uh, web server, a database, you know, microservices. Gotcha. Lean and mean. Exactly. And Proxmox has supported Alexi for ages, actually since version 4.0, when it swapped out OpenVZ. It's been a cornerstone for people wanting efficiency without giving up that necessary isolation. Makes sense. But what's really exciting about this 9.0 beta is that it brings a major upgrade to LXC. It tackles some uh, long-standing pain points and really unlocks new ways to be even more efficient. Okay, tackling pain points. I like the sound of that. So what's the first big breakthrough we're seeing? What problem does it solve for users day to day? Right. The first one that jumps out, I think, is the container backup dialog. It's been streamlined. Okay. A UI change? Well... Yes, but it's more than just looks. It's about efficiency. They've made the change detection mode selector, you know, the thing that optimizes backups. Mm -hmm. It now only shows up if your backup target is a Proxmox backup server. Ah, so it hides it otherwise. Exactly, which might sound minor. Right. right. But it makes a real difference. Less clutter on the screen. Those crucial modes only appear when they're actually relevant. Okay, I can see that. Reduces confusion. Precisely. Someone online put it perfectly. The little things are nice. And that sums it up. It reduces friction, lets you focus on actually building stuff, not fighting the interface. Yeah, especially if you're managing a lot of containers, those little time savers add up. Absolutely. Faster setup, fewer mistakes, it compounds. Okay, so that's efficiency. Let's switch gears to security. I read something about SSH host keys changing, something about DSA keys. Yeah, that's another important one, though it may be a bit more subtle. It's a key security boost. Proxmox VE 9.0 beta won't generate DSA SSH host keys anymore when you set up a container. And why is that significant? DSA sounds familiar, but refresh my memory. Right, so DSA is an older cryptographic algorithm, and OpenSSH, the standard tool for SSH, has basically dropped support for it. Why? Because, well, it has known vulnerabilities. It's outdated. Ah, okay, so Proxmox is just catching up. Exactly. It's aligning with modern security practices. By ditching DSA key generation, it automatically makes new containers more secure right out of the box, hardens them against exploits tied to that old crypto. So it's about future-proofing, but also just better security now. Precisely. The online tech communities definitely see it that way. It's one less thing to worry about, you know? Whether you're just running a simple pie hole or something way more complex like a Kubernetes cluster through tools like Cloudfleet, one less legacy vulnerability hanging around. Getting rid of those little legacy headaches is always good. Okay, on to networking. I heard a rumor, well, more than a rumor, that a persistent link down bug finally got squashed. Oh, yeah, that bug. Sounds like you know the one. How bad was it? I remember wrestling with network weirdness in the past. It can be maddening. You're absolutely right. It was a genuine headache for a lot of people. What happened was 
the link down setting in LXC configuration that sometimes it just wasn't respected. Yeah. The container wouldn't behave as expected. And that would mess things up how? It could totally disrupt your network setups, especially if you were doing anything slightly complex, relying on precise control over those virtual network interfaces. Right. So the good news, Proxmox VE 9.0 beta nails this bug. It's fixed. LXC containers now correctly honor that link down setting. Okay, that's crucial for what kind of scenarios? Think about hot plugging virtual NICs or managing really intricate network topologies. It gives you that predictable control back. I saw a comment online saying the networking configuration could use some improvements. Diplomatic. Right. But this fix, plus other network improvements like supporting different interface names and new STN stuff we'll talk about. Yeah. It makes LXC and 9.0 beta just way more reliable for network heavy tasks. Makes sense. Even if you're just playing around with like those cheap 40 gig Arista switches someone mentioned finding online for $150. Wow, $150 for 40 gig. That is a find. Okay, so these LXC updates lawn sound pretty great, but how do they fit into the bigger picture of Proxmox 9.0? Are there other general features that sort of boost LXC indirectly? Absolutely. Got to look at the whole package. Take the new SDN Fabrics feature. SDN, Software Defined Networking. Exactly. They've introduced support for creating these complex routed networks, things like two-layer spine leaf setups right within Proxmox. Okay, that sounds pretty advanced. It is. But think about how it complements LXC. Containers are lightweight, right? Now you can easily drop them into these really sophisticated, high-performance network environments, perfect for demanding stuff, maybe like a full mesh Ceph storage cluster where network performance is absolutely key. Ah, I see the connection. Better networking for everything, including containers. You got it. One enterprise user online basically said SDN Fabrics alone will make this a great release. That tells you something. Yeah, that's strong praise. What else? Storage, maybe? Oh, big time. Storage improvements are huge, and they definitely help LXC users too, even if indirectly sometimes. First off, snapshots for thick provisioned LVM on shared storage. Okay, break that down. LVM shared storage like a SAN? Exactly. Like using an ISCSI or fiber channel SAN? Uh, before, getting good snapshot support with thick LVM volumes on shared storage was tricky. Now it's properly supported. People online are calling it huge and the last thing that was missing. And how does that help containers? Isn't that more a VM thing? Primarily, yes. But think about integrated environments. Yeah. If your VMs run better and are easier to manage on your SAN, that frees up resources and simplifies the overall infrastructure that your containers also rely on. It's especially big for folks migrating from, say, VMware or Hyper-V clusters that heavily use SANs. It makes Proxmox a much stronger contender for those environments, which might be running containers alongside VMs. Right. It removes a barrier for adopting Proxmox in those scenarios. Makes sense. Then there's the one everyone's talking about, ZFS 2.3 with RAID-Z expansion. Ah, yes. The inject this straight into my veins feature. Yeah, yeah that quote sums up the excitement pretty well. It's a genuine crowd pleaser. Yeah. This addresses a massive long-standing limitation with ZFS. Expanding a RAID-Z array. You know, RAID-Z is like RAID 5 or 6 for ZFS. Before, if you built, say, a 5-drive RAID-Z1 array and wanted to add a 6th drive to make it bigger, you couldn't. Not easily. You basically had to back everything up, destroy the pool, recreate it with 6 drives, and restore. A huge pain. Ouch. Yeah, I remember that being a limitation. So yeah. now, With ZFS 2.3 integrated here, you can just add drives to an existing RAID-Z dev online without downtime. Seriously? Just slot in a new drive and expand. Pretty much. It simplifies scaling storage dramatically. Huge for home labbers who won't have to rebuild arrays anymore just to add space. And massive for businesses needing agile storage growth without disrupting services. That is game changing for ZFS users. Absolutely. And combine that with things like the ZFS rewrite command helping with data rebalancing. It means your LXC containers running on ZFS get truly flexible, scalable, and optimized storage underneath. Something people have wanted since like 2012. Wow. Okay, the excitement makes a lot more sense now. And yeah, the online buzz is definitely there. You see people talking about spending weekends tinkering, joking about staying up till 3 a.m. Oh boy, 3 a.m. Yeah, I saw that one. It feels like these LXC improvements specifically really hit a sweet spot for people focused on efficiency. But, you know, with all this excitement, is everyone happy? Or are there still things people wish were included or areas needing work? That's a really important question. It's crucial to keep a balanced perspective. While the overall reaction is overwhelmingly positive, it's not all celebration. Okay, like what? What are the critiques? Well, you still see disappointment over certain missing features. 
things like built-in load balancing or right. maybe native support for ARM64 hardware, which is getting more popular. Right. ARM support is a recurring request. It is. And then there's the ongoing challenges around high availability HA, especially for containers that use PCI or USB device pass-through. Uh, pass-through always complicates HA. Exactly. One user put it bluntly, HA is still useless if you use resource mappings. That kind of comment highlights that while 9.0 is a big step, there are still tricky areas. People also wish for easier, more seamless GPU pass-through, maybe for running things like large language models inside containers. LLMs in containers. Yeah, I can see the demand for that. So yeah, it's a triumph in many ways, definitely. But there's still a wish list, still room for Proxmox to grow, especially around some of these more advanced LXC use cases. That's fair. It's good to see the community being honest about that too. So beyond the big LXC, SDN, and ZFS stuff, are there other notable bits in 9.0 beta worth mentioning quickly? Oh, definitely. There are tons of smaller GUI and API improvements. Little fixes everywhere, notification system tweaks, fixing annoying consent window sizes, uh, better translations for languages like Czech, Korean, Russian, yeah. making it more accessible globally. Those quality of life fixes matter. They really do. Also, you can now import VM disks directly from storage locations marked with an import content type. Sounds minor, but it simplifies migration workflows. Less clicking around, less complexity, which can directly help if you're setting up environments that will host LXC containers too. Okay. And, of course, the new QEMU version, 10.0.2, that brings performance improvements for the full virtual machines. And a smoother running host system with faster VMs is always good news for the LXC containers sharing that system. It means more resources available overall. Right. A rising tide lifts all boats, including the containers. Exactly. Okay. So wrapping this up then, Proxmox VE 9.0 beta. It's really not just another update, is it? It feels more like an invitation. A call to adventure, maybe. I like that. Call to adventure. Yeah. The LXC enhancements, we talked about the smoother backups, the better security with DSA gone, the networking fix. They genuinely make it easier to deploy these lightweight, efficient containers. Uh-huh. Less friction. Whether you're that home lagger firing up a Plex server in a container or an enterprise admin managing a whole Kubernetes fleet on Proxmox, these updates seem designed to let you do more but with less hassle, pushing what open source virtualization can offer. Yeah, and the foundation feels really solid this time around. So the Proxmox VE 9.0 beta ISO, it's out there, ready for download, but the big flashing letters, warning. Yes, absolutely. It is a beta. Don't put your critical production data on it without testing. Back up your stuff first. Seriously. Uh -huh. Preferably using Proxmox backup server, since it integrates so well. Good advice. Backups first, adventure second. Always. And remember, because Proxmox is open source, this beta is just the start. Huh. There's a whole global community banging on it, reporting huh? bugs, suggesting improvements. The final release of 9.0 will likely be even more polished. Maybe they'll even address some of those wish list items like better HA for pass-through or, you know, a slicker mobile UI people keep asking for. We can hope. So for you listening right now, whether you're chasing that thrill of a new home lab project or you're aiming for serious enterprise efficiency, these LXC breakthroughs really do open up new possibilities. It's kind of a ticket to that virtualization jackpot we mentioned. Mm. So here's a final thought to chew on. With these new LXC capabilities, with backups being smoother, networking more solid, what's that unexpected, maybe resource light project you could finally spin up, something you maybe held back on before? The adventure awaits.